everyone, Patty here. We're going to do a no sew journal cover that we can put our inserts in that we've already made from our journal. I've got three signatures here that are ready to be put into a journal. So I've just taken a piece of cardstock, 8.5 by 11, cut it in half, and then added just a little half inch for the spine of the journal. But first I want to go over a few things that we're going to be using. I have a heat and bond that's in a roll form of tape. There's the ultra hold heat and bond that comes in a flat piece like this. This is a no sew type of heat and bond because it's ultra hold so it's going to be extra thick. Then we have a light ultra bond which you could use if you were going to do some sewing. They also have the ultra in the big long rolls and then also there was a heat and bond for stretch material and the shirt that I had picked out that I had cut which I have a couple of them is kind of a stretch material which I like using these hair ties the ouchless hair ties when you're using buttons because they work perfect. I've even bought um, some larger ones thinking that oh those would be really nice as the journal grows I'd be able to expand it even bigger instead of these that are a little smaller. I do have some of these metal and they are magnets and you just stick them in and fold those back with a pair of pliers. We might use those or else you have your Velcro. We could use Velcro for a closure. So we have some different ideas that we could use. And I've got some ribbons here. And I thought that I would use my tape, iron on the ribbons onto my tape so that I could add those for an embellishment on the front. I think that will look, end up looking very nice. Watches from Smith & Noble use go online and send them an email and you get different swatches for free. Those make nice little pieces and I thought that I could use those on the front of my cover. I also have a couple pieces of chipboard that I've cut that would be nice for layering for the front of it. So we'll see what we get to by the time we get to the front. But first off, we're going to cut our heat and bond, the stretch and we're going to put it down and iron it down first. It's pretty close to perfect width so I just need to cut off a strip across here. You want it to be a little bit smaller than the actual size. And you want to make sure that you are going to be ironing this on to the wrong side of your fabric. See how this side is so much brighter? So we're going to iron our heat and bond right to the material. Make sure you get to every corner. And you can kind of check it adhering or if you need to do a little more ironing. You don't want any steam, just heat, heat and bond on your material. Okay, we're going to put down, I'm going to give a little bit of a margin on all sides. Just put our little spine piece just a fourth of an inch over and our other five and a half by eight and a half. That on top of this one. Now 
Now this iron I have designated for crafts because you're not going to want to use that on your clothes afterwards. You need to have an iron designated just for your projects or you're going to make a big mess. I'm also doing this on a no stick pad. Okay, so now I've got that all in there. Okay, now my other piece of material, making sure this is the right side. Of course, I didn't cut them perfectly straight. And I have just a file folder that I'm going to use to go over the top of this side because this is a stretchy knit and those particles of the heat and bond will come through. See how my lines go like this on my material? I think I'm going to use that to follow with putting some of my heat and bond tape. This is the important part of getting it nice and adhered to the other side. You're on high heat and you're just letting it get attached. I'm moving it from both sides back forward and back so I can get a good bond. It's an ultra bond. This is a 3 8 inch randomly cut a couple pieces. I usually like to work in odd numbers, but I really like how four pieces are going to work across there. So now I'm going to adhere those on. Okay, we've got those on. Oops, missed this corner a little bit. Being this material is kind of a stretchy knit, if I set my hot iron straight on this material, I am going to melt it. So I have to be very careful about that and not... Okay, I've got this one that's kind of a real nice rust color. But I like this one too, but I think I'm going to use every other one so I can get a little contrast. That little piece of tape that was on the ribbon is kind of helping hold that down. Maybe I should have some tape here for all of it. We've got those nicely attached. You really can't see the light colored one as well as you can see the darker colored ribbon. My idea of the heating bond adhering to two pieces of ribbon didn't work so I just added another strip of the heating bond. You can get those strips in varying sizes and I just put another little piece on top of it because I really like the look of the two colored ribbon. It makes the one that's not standing out a little more prominent. But I do think that it's added a nice touch to our journal cover. Okay, now I'm going to take a pair of pinking shears and go around the whole thing and give it a nice pinking shear cut. Being this is a no-sew project, we are not going to add any sewing to the corners. And with this being a knit, it won't ravel as much. If you don't have pinking shears, the scissors that have that sawtooth edge on them, that's fine. You just want to trim these up because we had made it larger. So you're just wanting to square up your material. I like the look of the shears. Okay, we have a nice, nice edge. It folds nicely there. 
Let's get our signature covers. They're going to fit in there nicely. And I think I could even cut off... See, my cardboard's clear over here. I think I could even cut off a little more straight down this way. Just about a little less than half an inch. That's the nice part about making it just a little bit bigger. So you have plenty of room for squaring up and getting it to fit in there nice. Oh, I like that. I think that's looking pretty good. I really like my buttons that I had bought. I know I said this was going to be a no-sew project. You have to sew the signatures in. So I have to get needle and thread out anyway. So I've allowed in my no-sew project sewing on a button. So we're going to push our hair tie. It's just one of these no metal elastic hair ties through the shank of a button. Then we're going to pull it back through the hole. Let's see if I can get that just a little bit closer. Okay, we've put the hair tie through the shank. Now we're going to pull this piece through and hook it like that. Now we have our button ready to sew. We're going to find the center of our material from here to here. We'll find the center and we're going to hand sew these two buttons, one on one side and one on the other, and it will close like this. Okay, I have a fine point disappearing ink pen and mark where I'm going to put my button. So I'm going to mark a spot right here on both sides. Okay, I'm going to sew my button on. I have my knot on the top side because I think I can cover it more than seeing it on this side. And because I have several layers, I'm hoping that you won't see the stitching too much, but I want to make sure I get it all the way through. So I want to get it good because there's going to be a lot of pull on the buttons when you get start closing this and opening it every day while you're traveling and you're writing in it. Stitches and we're going to make sure that we go through the shank of the button and attach that shank to the material. Now you can make a pretty diagonal, like a crisscross shape on the back side that will look real nice on this side where I come up. Now we just go around it, pull on this, make a nice knot, do that twice. And we've got our button sewn on firmly. You know, this one you're going to be going through that cardstock that you have in there. Mm -hmm.